Hello and welcome to another walkthrough by Commander Rogden from Rogden Gaming. We are currently on the Thieves Guild questline, part 2. About to start the quest, Dampen Spirits. So, you're a fat. It's about time, Brynjolf's faith. All I care about is cause and effect. Head to the Bannered Mare in Whiterun and look for Malus Machius. He'll fill you in on all the details. So according to Maven, we will find our contact in Whiterun, located at the Bannered Mare. Speaking with Malice will reveal his plot to ruin the Hunting Brew Meadery, which he plans to do via pesticide that he wants you to place in the boiler room. However, additionally, he wants you to clear out the nest that he originally placed so that Maven can Once use the brewery herself. We'll then direct you to speak with ha Sabjorn, the NPC at the Hunting Room Meadery, which is due east of the White Run Stables. His additional dialogue will reveal a suggestion of breaking into the Hunting Room Boilery without the key. But as you can see, doing so would be... So instead, we're simply going to speak with Sabjorn. Are you kidding me? The new Hunting Brew reserved for the Captain of the Guard. If he sees the meadery in this state, I'll be... Oh, really? I hope you're not expecting to get paid until the... So at this point, you can either agree with him and just simply get paid when the job is done, which we know is not going to happen. You can choose to intimidate him, which is a relatively easy check. Or you can choose to persuade him, which is a very difficult check. Okay. If you manage to persuade or intimidate him, he will pay you a moderate sum of gold. I bought some poison. He further goes on to explain that he will provide you with the poison that you must use on the nest, and you will also be using that on the boiler. Immediately upon entering, you will be beset by skeev, though the real danger will be these bear traps on the floor. If you wish to avoid suffering a disease, you may wish to get rid of these skeevers using range, as killing any one of them will bring out the other three. In the following room, there are five frostbite spikes, all in a very tightly packed formation. Including a giant version of one of them as well. Passing through this area, there are some very well hidden bear traps. As well as a tripwire that you should activate before you proceed. There are approximately six rats in the next room, including an angry mage. If you wish to kill them without the mage participating in the fight, you should wait for your reticule to go back to hidden, as he can be extremely dangerous. Once you have finished with the dangerous mage, do not forget to activate the nest, open this treasure, and read this sneak skill book before heading out towards the boilery. Once you enter the boilery, you want to head up these stairs and drop the poison in this vat. Do not forget to loot this chest as well as many of the barrels in this area for some additional coin. Once you are satisfied you have stolen everything you can, take the key and exit the boilery. Once you have completed your two tasks, you can return to Sabjorn. It's about time. I had to stall the captain until you were... You'll... What... What's in this? I... I don't know. What's wrong? And watch as he gets taken away to jail. Before Your mission is not entirely yet over, so, as you still need to acquire his book. books, to which Malice will give you the key. However, the quest is not entirely over. If you wish to obtain the secret objective, you must unlock this expert door and retrieve the Hunting Brew Decanter. For those of you that are interested, you may wish to read this alchemy book on the table, as well as a missive better explaining this whole situation. Once you have completed the job and returned to Maven to hand in the quest, she will provide you with a random enchanted weapon. Malice, the new owner of the Hunting Brew Meadery, will also now act as a fence for you. Following Maven's advice, we return to Brynjolf with information about the strange markings. 
Then this is beyond coincidence. Someone's trying to take us down by driving a wedge between Maven and the guild. Mercer thinks he knows a way to identify this new thorn in our side. My contacts regarding the information you recovered from Golden. It would seem our adversary is attempting to take us apart. You jest, but the just don't mistake my admiration. Because even the parchment you recovered mentioned his real name is Gullamai. Gullamai is our inside man at the East Empire Company in solitude. According to Mercer, the individual that we're looking for is in the East Empire Company in Solitude. Right back to the guild and get the information to Mercer. Nothing else. If you discover Gullam is holding out on us and has more loot stashed away than he claims. With newfound information in hand, we are off to Solitude. However, before leaving, we are going to return the hunting brew decanter to Delvin, who will provide you with a small reward of gold. Once you are satisfied that you have done everything that you need to do, you can fast travel to Solid and enter the Winking Skeever, where you can start your conversation with Golem A. So after he has revealed to you his new name, you'll then be provided with three separate choices. An Intimidate check, which will always fail, a Persuasion check, which is very difficult and does not provide any additional reward, or a Bribe check, which is always successful but that requires you to steal something for him. Assuming that you chose the bribery route, you'll need to head for the Blue Palace, where inside, very close to the entrance, will be the wine that you are looking for. When you return to him with the wine, he'll provide you with the information that you need to know, as well as a reward of several filled soul gems. Once you have received the information that you require, your log will now update, insisting that you follow him. Due to the fact that Golem will never turn around, doing this during the day is no different than doing it at night, and you are not required to sneak. However, before he escapes into the East Empire Warehouse, you may wish to lift his key. If for some reason he detects you, he will merely comment that you should no longer be following him, and then will shortly turn around and continue walking. If you wish to speed this process, you may kill him, which will then update your quest log with a new objective. If for some reason you lost him during the tale, he can be found at the far end of the East Empire Warehouse. Before we get started on this next section, I just wanted to go over a few things. The first is that apparently killing these guards is perfectly okay. However, it seems as though they were simply trying to make it easy on us, because these do not seem like guards that would normally be within acceptable killing parameters. Additionally, it is considerably more entertaining to go through this without killing anyone. So I will go over how you can accomplish avoiding the guards. If you head up these stairs, you will find a locked chest as well as someone sleeping. However, if you drop down, you can find a smithing skill book as well as several ingots. Note that the guard that you passed overhead previously, however, will continue a patrol in this area. Along this wall here will be several empty chests, as well as some noble clothes, and other valuable loot. When you approach the guard on the ship, he will shortly begin a patrol to stare at the wall. Patiently wait for him to pass, and you may loot the chest on his ship. Alternatively, if your sneak is not high enough, you may pass around side these barrels. It is recommended that you wait for this guard to begin her position at the ship, so that you can avoid the patrol of this guard as well as the one on the ship. You will want to proceed when the guards have started their patrol away from you and then proceed up these stairs, as inside this cabin you'll find your next secret objective. Once you are satisfied that you've cleaned this area out, you'll want to proceed down in this little waterway here and enter the brine water grot. Note that if you are following closely behind Gulum, he will turn around when he reaches the end of his patrol, and as waiting for him to complete his final walkthrough does not pose any penalties, it is recommended that you take your time through this area. Almost immediately upon entering the next area, 
you'll want to activate the tripwire in front of you. In this next area, there'll be a variety of bandits, which are considered fair game to kill. However, you may wish to avoid fighting them as the bandit marauder can pose a considerable challenge. Up ahead, you'll find two additional bandits, as well as a chest under the water. If you wish to avoid killing anyone, you'll need to sneak around to the spider web, where you'll need to fight numerous spiders in order to proceed undetected. This next area is patrolled by a bandit marauder, who you can choose to wait to patrol away and head down the side passage, where you will find several traps, as well as a stray angry dog. In order to pass these two bandits up ahead, you must move around this pillar like so, and you must possess the light foot or this pressure plate will reveal your location. Uh -huh. To proceed by this next area without killing anyone, you must wait for that previous bandit to do her patrol and then head up these stairs. You must drop down from this ledge and wait patiently for Gollum to approach you. However, choosing to kill the band is the more optimal as there are many chests in this area to be looted. Regardless of how you go about accomplishing this, you'll need to pass through the dialogue that Gollum provides you. Your answers are irrelevant. He will always answer you the same way. And what he reveals is that Carlia is responsible for murdering the previous guildmaster. No, no. Please. You have to believe me. I don't know. When I asked her where she was going, she just muttered, We're the end. Here, take the Golden Glow estate deed as proof. And wait, Mercer never told you about her? If you speak with him again and choose the first option, he yeah, will then act as your fence in solitude. Consider if instead you chose to kill him, you will find his confession letter in this chest, which you must then read in order to forward the quest. In order to leave the area, you must activate this lever in the middle, open this gate, and kill the three Horkers in the next area. Upon returning to Mercer, he will further explain the situation. No. After we disappears again. Yes, I'm going with you, and together we're going to kill her. Here's your payment for as soon as you can. The payment that he is referring to is the option to upgrade your armor at Tenilia. Killing the guards at the East Empire Company does not reduce or change in any way the effect of the upgrade. However, killing Golamai will make you ineligible for this reward. The option to improve your armor will only occur once before you obtain your master set, so you may wish to choose carefully. The armor rating of each piece increases by one when it is improved. In addition, for the boots and gloves, the enchantment bonus is increased by 10%. For the queer ass, it is improved by 15 points, and for the hood, it is increased by 5%. If, however, you have lost or sold your armor, it will provide the following dialogue. Tough luck for you, then. Come back when you have at least one of the pieces. This dialogue will repeat itself indefinitely, thus eliminating her as an eligible fence. To prevent this from happening, you can kill Golem and consequently prevent yourself from being eligible for this reward. Your choice, in other words, becomes having a fence here in the Thieves' Guild or having a fence in Sol- And wrapping everything up, we will return oh, our well. guild trinket to Delvin if for our usual come. reward. We should compensate you for your void. This completes our walkthrough for the Thieves' Guild questline part oh, 2, Scoundrel's Folly oh, and Dampened Spirit. This is Commander Rogden. Thanks for watching.